my name is Aviwe and I'm a bricklaying instructor for Coro Brick. I will be demonstrating a cavity wall for the Clay Brick Association. When you are beginning with the cavity wall, in fact, any type of brickwork, put your bricks in dry bond so that you know how to measure your peps. And if you have any big peps, then you'll be able to share them properly in your brickwork. This is our 10 millimeter uh, round jointer. So this is what we use to make sure that we have our pep joints at 10 millimeters. So like I said, you need to share them properly because you can see here now we have a big pep joint. So we need to make sure that all our pep joints are the same size so that our bond goes properly. We're gonna be starting with our internal side. So you build one course, then after building your one course, that's when you can put your, your DPC and it needs to slope externally. So you need to make sure that your mortar is consistent. Mix it a little bit before you start building. When you are laying your mortar, don't be shy. Make sure that you lay as much as you can because your mortar needs to penetrate on the holes of the face brick. And the other important aspect of brick laying Battering for your pep joints. You batter your brick before you lay it. Battering helps to make sure that it bonds with the other brick. So you don't have to hit your brick with a thrower. You can just use your hand because the mortar is soft to make sure that it aligns with your building line. And then you just cut your mortar, making sure that your brick still remains clean. And you need to remember that this is face brick. So cleanliness is an important thing in brick laying. It's very important to start building from one corner and then build from another corner and then meet in the middle. In the middle is gonna be difficult for you to spot if this pep joint is big or this one is small. So that's why it's important to start from corner to corner. You just need to make sure that your pep joints are filled in because when you start jointering, you don't want any pointing and jointing. And then once you're done with your first line, allow yourself a bit of space to see if all your bricks are aligning with your, your building line. So you need to make sure that the DPC is laid properly. One side, you know, you can just put your bricks here. And be sure to make sure that, you know, at least it overlaps maybe by at least two mils or three mils maximum. Then we start laying our bricks. The DPC, the reason why we slope it like this, so when it rains, it helps to make sure that when the water comes in, it penetrates through the bottom. So this slope here, it allows the water to flow through the mortar and outside. And then for your cavity wall, you use a 280 mil DPC. So here we've laid our first, our first brick, and then this is our second brick. We don't batter this one. This is gonna be our whip hole. This is where our water is gonna penetrate and exit the wall. So once you have this one, then you just lay your bricks one, two, and then you'll have your whip hole on the third brick. So the whip holes are only at the bottom and only on top of openings. So you don't get whip holes anywhere else. So the type of structure that we're building, it's a stretcher bond structure. Always be sure to check your fish line if it's still tight to make sure that you don't lose your gauge or your level. And when building, try not to push your bricks towards the fish line. At least leave maybe one mil or two mil on your fish line to allow your brick so that you can put it in properly. Because now if you push it straight towards the fish line, if it pushes, then you'll have your wall going out of plumb. So we need to make sure that the wall is still plumb from the foundation all the way up to the wall plate. And another thing that you need to do is to make sure that you keep your cavity clean at all times. So after building, make sure that you always clean, just like how uh, Donald is doing here cleaning our cavity wall for us because you don't want any water to sit here. Other advantages of building in a cavity wall, it also regulates temperature. And then you have an advantage of using two different types of clay bricks. So now when you are wrecking your wall, make sure that you put your brick at 110 and then you use your standard wedge of 10 mil. So this is to make sure that you don't lose your bond. Remember, this is a stretcher bond. So it holds half this side, half this side. So your wall ties, when you space them on the drawing, they'll give you a specification. When you go to the second course of your wall ties, make sure that if you put them at 220, then when you start again, you put them at 110 because your wall ties need to be scattered on the wall. So the purpose of the wall ties, remember now we have a 110 thick wall this side and another 110 thick wall this side. And this side, it's not gonna be plastered. This is face. So this side might, might be strong because you wanna plaster it on the inside, but you need to tie it into this one to make sure that the wall is stable and it's strong. 
And what my colleague is doing is very important. You need to make sure that your whip holes are clean, there's no mortar, because now once you start building, going up, the mortar is gonna dry up and then you won't be able to clean. So you need to make sure that you keep the consistency in cleaning. So probably once you go, maybe every five courses, because mortar falls on the inside, as you build, clean, as you build, clean, so that you know that your whip holes are always clean. So like I said in the beginning, we're building in stretcher bond, so it's very important to make sure that your bond remains consistent. So stretcher bond is the easiest course that is used in construction because you're just doing the same thing from foundation all the way up to the top. On site, they always said at least every five courses, make sure that you check your profile. So when you check your plumbness, you wanna check the side of your building line and then you wanna check the side of your stopped end where your corner is gonna be. So also just check with your spirit level that all your bricks are still aligned. Brick force is to make sure that any weight is transferred evenly across the whole wall. So now if you don't have your, your brick force, then it means that when you put in your roof, your wall is gonna crack because the wall ties are not for, for any weight that's coming in. The wall ties are just to tie both walls together. So the brick force is important to make sure that any weight that comes from the top, that would be your roof, or if it's a double story house, then that would be your, your slab on the top. So now when it comes to brick force, there's different specifications. So minimum, we start at three courses and then we go up to five courses. We don't go more than that. So here, because this is a cubby tour, we have our wall ties on the second course and then on the third course is gonna be our brick force. Then when we go up on the next course is gonna be our wall ties and then we're gonna count three courses up and then it's gonna be brick force again. And then you need to make sure that your brick force, it doesn't show on the outside because this is face brick, you're gonna join it. So you don't want any wires showing on your brick. So you need to make sure that you push it inside for at least five mil. So just like your brick force, you don't want your wall ties to be showing on either side of your wall. So you need to make sure that you leave space this side and you leave space this side to allow uh, for the wall tie to just sit at the center. And then now when it comes to cleaning on our face brick, make sure to let your motor to set first. This is how we want our motor to be before we start cleaning. We always recommend that you use a dry sponge or a dry cloth on site. So these are the existing walls that we built prior today. So as you can see here, this one is our cavity wall, but now this one has insulation on the inside. And so insulation also plays an important role in making sure that it insulates. So it regulates, in fact, temperature. So if it's hot on the outside, then on the inside, you're gonna be nice and cool. And then if it's cold, you're gonna be nice and warm on the inside. And then it also helps in places where there's high rainfall because it makes sure that the water goes through the cavity and down the whip holes. So your cavity wall, it's 280 millimeters thick. So you have your three quarter bed, which is here at 160. And then you have your 110 brick, which is a half brick wall. And then you have a 10 millimeter pep joint. So on this one now, we're gonna be demonstrating on where we have our openings. So our openings would be your door frames, your window frames. So we're gonna start from this corner, going that way. As you can see, my esteemed colleague has already started from one side. So he's gonna show us from the back how to tie in our three quarter on the other side. So I'll be starting from this side and I'll be showing how to tie in your, your three quarter bed on the door frame. Be sure to batter. So remember now, we did say that this is stretcher bond. So this course needs to be consistent with the one at the bottom. Okay. So on your doors, we have what we call the lags. So the lags will assist you in making sure that you build in your door and it is, and it is stable. So one thing that's very important when you're building in your doors, you need to make sure that you fill it in with mortar so that it doesn't make a noise either when you're closing the door or opening the door because if it's not stable and it doesn't have mortar on the inside so when the door bangs on the frame then over time your frame is going to become loose so you need to make sure that you fill it in with mortar here so that your door frame doesn't become loose so we are doing just that and my colleague is going to be doing that on that side so your window frame you don't build it in immediately because your window frame needs to get the size of the, the door frame so they need to be on the same level. So the first thing you do you can build maybe a couple of courses maybe four or five 
then you can lift it up you can plumb your window so now here what you're doing is we're just opening up the space for our window frame so this is how your your three quarter ties in on the outer skin so you need to make sure that once you've built your three courses then your window comes to the center so how you center your window you're going to be using your steel tape to make sure that you have an equal side here so if let's say for example you measure 100 millimeters this side so it needs to be 100 millimeters this side so you don't want your window to be sitting skew you want it to be straight and also plumb on our internal side we need to make sure that we use our spirit level to make sure that everything is plumb so now this method that we used here is called a broken bond because you can see we used two three quarter pads because now remember you don't want to break your bond because of the openings you need to make sure that your bond is still consistent because when you go up on top of the openings the same bond that is here still needs to continue so hence we used a broken bond here as you can see here we have our three quarter brick we have our two three quarter bricks here and making sure that we don't break our bond so this is how we keep our cavity wall clean so we just this is not even expensive because you're still using the same mortar, I mean cement bags that you bought your mortar with. So you just put them inside, then once you're done, you remove them. Then you put in your wall ties. So this is our corners, very important. And making sure that you have your 110, 110 at the corners. So after three lines, you just need to check our window is still plumb okay even this side still plumb so now we've plumbed our window frame and what you do is just open your lugs so now we're gonna go to our finished cavity walls so as you can see here dpc is still important in your cavity wall so this dpc just like how you started in your foundation it slopes and it comes out through this side for any moisture that comes through it penetrates this side there's no there's no motor going inside and then also on top of our openings very important you need to make sure that you put in your roller course same with the dpc it also slopes it comes out through this side from the inside and also on door frames it's the same same procedure 